Hello, everyone. My name is Hadi Shwagi, and I'm an analyst here at Lumina Decision Systems. Today, I'm going to talk about our heat pump calculators, its inner workings, and the lessons we learned from. So, we recently did a project for Central Coast Community Energy. Um, we developed a heat pump calculator that does build savings from heat pump projects for the residential building in the Central Coast of California. Uh, this webinar is really motivated uh, by this project and the lessons we learned from this project. Uh, here I have outlined the agenda. I'm going to describe the problem and the challenges we had, uh, why even we need a, a heat pump calculator. I'm going to talk about the insight in depth and I will also briefly talk about model architecture and also do a quick demo of the heat pump calculator itself. And towards the end, we will open it up for questions and answers. All right, uh, as Mitsu mentioned, there has been a rising interest in the heat pumps over the past couple of years. And this is mainly influenced by a number of reasons. First of all, heat, heat pump can provide bill savings for customers. And what's better than that? This is going to be very useful from the end use perspective. Heat pump can also be beneficial for electric utilities. Uh, there are currently many summer peaking utilities in the country and by encouraging the use of more heat pump, they can generate and sell more, ele more electricity without having to invest much. So it should be a good deal for them. Heat pump also are a key element of pretty much all the deep decarbonization studies. So the idea is we are going to decarbonize the electric sector completely or have something near zero emission in the electric sector and then use that electricity in our high efficient devices at the end of this level. And that's how we actually did deep decarbonization. Heat pump also good for local air quality improvements. There are many resources uh, online about heat pumps. So you can revisit the Department of Energy website and also our own website, heatpumpevaluation.com, where we also have webinar on a basic of, of heat pumps and all, all the different configuration of uh, heat, heat pump installations. All right, so what is the problem here? Uh, our main problem here is for us to have a tool that accurately estimates the bill savings from installing heat pumps. And this is a challenging problem. This challenge comes from a number of factors. First of all, electric rates and also gas rates, they have their own complexities. And this complexity comes from the fact that the price of electricity can change by time of day, by month. They can also have tiers. So here on the right, you see a graphic of the two widely used rates from PGE. On the left, you see the ETOUC, and on the right, you have TOUD. So as is obvious from the graphic, they define some hours in the day as peak hours. And during peak hours, electricity becomes more expensive. The price of electricity can also change based on the season we are in. So eight months are defined for the winter and uh, four months during, for the summer season. So what is really has... Uh, implication for the heat pump is all this time of use rates and also the fact that some of these rates can have tiers. So what they do is when you are on a tiered base uh, rate, your consumption beyond a certain kilowatt hour, let's say like 10 kilowatt hour per day, is going to have a cost added. So more consumption means higher prices. Uh, this complexity also exists for natural gas rates, although to a much lesser extent. Natural gas rates do not vary by season and also time of day, but they have their rates also, uh, sorry, their uh, tiers, meaning that uh, more consumption comes at a higher price for natural gas too. 
that effective that effectively means in winter people get more car more prices for natural gas than during summer. Another issue that has huge implications for heat pumps is the uh, impact of indoor set point temperature on cooling and heating load profile. So on the right, I have daily winter thermal demand for three set point temperature in five degree increments, 65 degrees, 70 degree, and 75 degree. So as you can see, when the set point temperature, temperature is set on 65, we are not likely to get any heating needs during the afternoon and early evenings. But as the set point temperature rises, not only our total energy increases, but also our uh, peak demand increases accordingly. For a uh, 75 degree set point temperature, uh, we, we have uh, a lot of energy used during the peak hours and also our peak demand increases. So the point here it means the daily consumption does not scale linearly with set point temperature. As you can see, going from 65 to 70 incurs a 75% additional total energy daily use, but going from 70 to 75 has a different rate of change. And what dictates uh, the overall price of electricity is the is how we can how and when we consume uh, electricity. Another important factor that is inherent to all the heat pump technologies is the fact that uh, the air source heat pump efficiency or coefficient of performance changes based on outdoor temperature. So here we are drawing a graph from a uh, cool study that is done by RDH Building Science in British Columbia. And it clearly shows that there is a huge variation around uh, nominal COP of the heat pumps. And we also can infer that as the temperature gradient between indoor and outdoor temperature decreases, heat pump efficiency increases. So all these challenges make this problem of these savings for, from heat pump unique, and our calculator takes all this into consideration. And this is unlike many other existing tools that ignore these complexities. And doing so, I'm going to claim that leads to significant inaccuracy in bill saving calculation. I'm going to demonstrate this in the next few slides. Why do you even need a heat uh, calculator? And why all these complexities matter? So for that, I've defined two cases. Case one, does the build saving using average annual electric and gas rates? And that's pretty much what most calculators do and also most uh, HVAC vendors. The second case is our own approach, what our calculator does, which uh, looks at the sophisticated uh, rate structures. On the right, I have listed all the assumptions that go into these two cases. What is really different across these two cases has to do with these last four rows. As I described in the, uh, as, is, as is, I described for the case one, we are using average electricity rates here. And for case two, there is a color code also that makes the association between the assumption, like case specific assumption, and the case itself. So case two uses the actual rate structure. Here in our example, we are using TOUC. It has time of use and it also has tiers. And the gas rate is G1 residential service. All the other assumptions are identical across the two cases, like a space heating COP, water heating COP, gas furnace, water, uh, water heater efficiency, and our example is a 1,000 square feet single family home located in Monterey Bay, California. We also have specified the number of occupants and uh, historical growth escalation rate for electricity and gas prices. Okay, so the question we ask ourselves is, do these two cases really matter when it comes to bill saving calculations? It turns out that 
they, they are hugely different. So here I have the lifetime heat pump, uh, gas and electric real estate. So on the vertical axis, you see the total amounts of dollars that replacing a gas, uh, like existing conventional system with different heat pump configuration can bring about. So in order to closely look at all the different heat pump systems, I have defined three different scenarios. SHHP means, stands for a space heating heat pump, where I electrify a heating services using a space heating heat pump. HP, HW stands for heat pump water heater. And the third one deploys all the two, uh, the two heat pumps. So here we have two heat pumps, both for a space heating and water heating. So it turns out that these two rates greatly differ in terms of bill saving calculation. And as I will show later on, so we have a strong reason not to believe that, for example, this amount of saving coming from the average rate method is going to be incorrect. So not only here we have uh, a different, like uh, the error is different for each case, but it also changes based on the heat pump system. And in the next slide, I'm going to discuss why this is happening. So why using average rates is bad and why it could be misleading. So uh, here I have the annual electricity consumption. So the, what vertical axis shows is the total amount of kilowatt hour used annually by the single family home, 100, 1,000 square feet located in Monterey. So before, before heat pump, they have a certain production pattern that generates an average rate of electricity. So let's take a look at uh, the legends of this graph. So we are looking at E time of UC, that's the rate for PGE uh, territory. E TOUC has two tiers, tier one, tier two. It also has two seasons, summer, winter, and two times of day. So all these uh, rate periods generate eight unique uh, rate periods. And in the no heat pump case, total annual consumption distribution is shown across all these rate periods. So we know exactly, for example, tier one winter season consumes like 2000 kilowatt hour of electricity before switching to heat pumps. I have also uh, here the rates, the rates that as that are associated with each rate period. So now that I have the uh, period specific rates and also total consumption in each rate period, I should be able to, to take a weighted average and calculate the average rate. It turns out to be 31 cents, 31 cents per kilowatt for this particular example. So what is really interesting is what happens after the electrific electrification using heat pumps. So for all these three heat pump scenarios, the demand for electricity arrives after electrification, obviously. So whatever comes about this dotted line is the additional electricity that is associated with this particular scenario. For example, for the space heating heat pump, we have this much additional electricity and given the uh, load share of the heat pump for a space heating, it has coincidence with winter season periods, like the rate number two winter, this one, and rate number two winter on peak, this one. So the average marginal rate for this case is going to be 36, 36 cents per kilowatt hour. For heat pump water heater, not only we have coincidence with winter rate, winter period, what we also have coincidence with summer. And given the fact that electricity prices are usually more expensive during summer than winter, 
we end up with a higher marginal cost for the additional electricity in this scenario. And in the two heat pump scenario, it's something in between. So this should be, this should alone be telling why using average data is bad. So in the previous slide, we saw that in the two heat pump example, the total saving was a lot high in the average in, this, in that method that was using average rates. And that's why, <clears throat> and that's because that method is totally blind to the fact that as we electrify, our marginal cost for electricity is going to go up. So here I have a summary of what was said because there are a lot of information in this graph. So additional electricity required by the heat pump might be priced at a different rate. And this is probably going to be higher than the average rate if we are on a tier based rate. So the reason is that looking at this uh, no heat pump scenario, a big chunk of consumption takes the left. For example, in this case, 50% of the consumption is in the tier one bins where we have more electricity prices and that brings down the average. So just looking at this average for like electrification or heat pump scenario is not going to be a representative. And also the type of the heat pumps dictates what average, what the marginal rates we are going to get. So whether whether we are going whether we have coincidence with summer or winter is going to be determining what our marginal rate for electricity is going to be. Okay, now that we know electric rates are important, let's see how different rates perform in terms of big savings. So here again, you are seeing this heat pump lifetime gas and bleed uh, electric bill savings. So the y-axis is the total amount of dollars saved from uh, switching to heat pump. And here I'm comparing three different rates. So here, uh, E1 is a new rate that I'm introducing. Unlike the TOUC rates, which have time of use uh, variations, E1 has flat rates, but what it does is it penalizes electricity if they will be on certain level. So since we have three tiers here, up until like 10 kilowatt hour per day uh, has this 32 cents of price. Uh, going from 10 to 40 kilowatt hour per day comes at the higher price, 39. And going beyond that is going to be a lot more expensive. That's why where we have huge electrification in the two heat pump scenario where the electricity demand goes high, this, this rate is going to perform very poorly. This is essentially uh, deadly for uh, heat pump, this E1 rate. Looking at these two other rates, TOUC, we saw how it performs. TOUD is the most favorable rate across all the rates we have here. And while it has time of use, it doesn't have any tiers. And that's the conclusion that we can draw here. Tier rates disadvantage her heat pump uh, cost effectiveness. And that's because the more we electrify, the more the marginal electric uh, price of electricity is going to be. And this is also happening in a negative way for natural gas. So tiered gas prices uh, exacerbate this problem because the marginal price for avoided, avoided natural gas decreases as we consume less. So initially we have certain level of uh, natural gas consumption. If we keep reducing natural gas, Initially, we get higher reward because natural gas is probably in the higher tiers, which are more expensive. But as we keep electrifying and reducing our natural gas, uh, the marginal price for avoided natural gas goes down and that has a negative impact. So another conclusion that we have here is regarding a space heating versus water heating. 
A space heating aims to displace gas during winter, which is effectively more expensive than summer. And also, electricity price during winter is cheaper uh, compared to summer. And that makes a difference between this and these two scenarios, space heating versus heat pump water heating. Okay, a uh, quick discussion on the efficiency of the heat pump. Um, here we pose a question, can heat pump really provide bill savings? It depends on many factors. They can, but it depends on under certain circumstances that they can provide uh, good bill savings. Here, the main trade-off is between the gains we have from efficiency and the losses we have due to a high electricity to gas price ratio. So in order for a heat pump project to make sense economically, the, the gains from efficiency need to outweigh the higher price of electricity. I should note that the price of electricity per units of energy are a lot higher than the price of natural gas. And we only, it, it, this project of heat pump only makes sense if the gains from efficiency are sufficiently large. So let's take a look at one example. Uh, this is the back on the envelope calculation for the space heating scenario. Let's calculate the efficiency gains. We are going to divide the uh, uh, COP of the heat pump electric efficiency, which is 350% by the gas efficiency, 80%. That generates a number, 4.37. Let's uh, calculate the other side of the equation, marginal electricity to gas price ratio in the first year of operation. So we saw that the marginal cost of electricity is 30 cent, 36 cents per kilowatt hour. Dividing this by the price of natural gas and introducing this number to take care of the unit conversion generates this number, 4.30. So it looks like that our gain are slightly higher than our losses, but we can declare a victory here. These two numbers are too close to each other to want to draw any significant conclusion regarding the cost effectiveness of heat pumps. What we can say is this is going to be a very natural competition. But if instead of natural gas, propane is going to be replaced, calculation changes. So Per unit of energy, liquid fuels are a lot more expensive than natural. So while we have the same level of gains from efficiency, our gas, gas furnace efficiency is going to be the same uh, as the propane efficiency, but the price of propane may, uh, plays a big role here. And I have assumed the $4 per gallon for the price of uh, propane. During the unit conversion, it, it generates this number, 2.52. Looks like in this case, if the base on technology is, uh, instead of natural gas, liquid fuel, things might make more sense. And this is probably why in many parts of the country where they use liquid fuel for heating services, heat pump might be a better option. One example could be like New England and New York, although they have their own problem with uh, cold climate heat pump and the drop of significant drop of efficiency of heat pump. I want to caveat this and say that, so this is not the only metric to look at. We have COP variation with outdoor temperature. And also since we are looking at the lifetime bill savings, our assumption for the fuel price escalation play a big role. All right, let's summarize what was said and the lessons we learned. So we developed this calculator and uh, it takes into account all these nuances regarding how load shape changes, how uh, different rates can impact our bill savings. I will show the calculator itself in a moment, but just wanted to highlight that simplified bill saving based on average rates are going to be likely erroneous. 
And that should be avoided if we are interested in more accurate uh, calculations. And all, the, all these trying to rate structure in your set point temperature, overly load shapes, and temperature dependent feedback efficiency, they significantly influence the real saving estimates. Um, based on what we learned, we can list some factors that hinder heat pump cost effectiveness. One of the most important one is uh, rate theory. So if you don't do anything by just uh, switching to a non-tier based uh, rate, you are, you are more likely to uh, gain more from a heat pump project. And the other factor is high electric to gas rate ratio during summer periods, because this affects uh, heat pump water heaters. So the comparison between electrifying space heating and electrifying hot water heating, so our calculation shows that there are more advantage in electrifying space heating. There are some factors definitely worth uh, against uh, yeah, in favor of heat pump uh, cost effectiveness, one of them is efficiency gain through higher heat pump COPs. So if we come up with more advanced heat pump, and if we find ways to uh, maintain the level of efficiency of heat pump in colder climates, we will stand in a better position regarding heat pump cost effectiveness. The other thing that works in, for, in favor of heat pump lower electric to gas price ratio during the winters, like I said. The other conclusion we can draw is that our saving potentials are likely to be higher than the baseline technology in the liquid fields. All right, um, so the main focus of this presentation was not heavy, heavily, uh, so it's not heavy on the model architecture, but for those who are interested, I am laying out these uh, conceptual model that we have in the uh, in this calculator. There are a lot more details uh, floating around in the model, but at the higher level, we use PMY3 climate data uh, and also DOE building simulation load to uh, develop some regression regression coefficient. So TMY3 climate data it has it's a massive overly database of many climate factors in, for many parts of the country. And using that in conjunction with DOE building simulation load provided us with some regression coefficient, which we could later on use applied on set point adjusted climate data to develop load that are sensitive to set point temperature. So this standard load by end you has the monthly as well as diurnal variations that we are interested in, but they do not necessarily generate the actual survey data. So we use the residential uh, appliance saturated survey 2019 uh, in order to calibrate this standard load. And this standard load, since it is broken down by end use, it can be tweaked by all these user specified input to get the user specific load by end use. Now that we have user specific load for certain buildings uh, in different in, in certain climate zones, we have user specific load by end use. And we can use the heat pump performance here and the baseline technology efficiency to develop user specific load by end use after. So now that we have before heat pump load and after heat pump load, we can apply our rate module to calculate gas and electric bed being as after heat pumps. All right, so let's take a look at the calculator itself. So this is the website we developed as part of the project we had with Central Coast Community Energy. It has a lot of cool materials in it. Right now, I'm going to go to the calculator tab and I'm going to quickly click through all these tabs here. 
So in the main page, uh, you get to pro provide like basic information about the building, like what is the type of the building, the zip code, what is the uh, your perceived uh, level of insulation or air tightness, and floor area number of residents. Here we ask questions about uh, user specific electric rates and what fuels they use. If I choose natural gas in the second tab, I'm asked to provide information about existing system. So here I get to provide the configuration of my technology, what kind of technology I'm going to compare the heat pump against. So if I select like the central heat pump, then I need to provide the uh, efficiency level for it, then I can provide a set point temperature here. So if you don't have any cooling, you can specify you no know, if yes, you would, you would get asked the same question here. And the same question are uh, asked about uh, heat pump what uh, water heating systems. So clicking on this gets us to this page where we can see uh, all the information that are speed up. So here we need to provide which services we are interested in. If you are only interested in a space heating, you can unselect this item. And here we, based on what you selected in the previous tab, uh, we have a recommended heat pump for you. So since we selected a central uh, heating system with gas furnace, the recommended heat pump is going to be central ducted system, but if you choose like a hydronic system, the recommended heat pump changes accordingly. So if there are like local or federal incentive, we can specify that in the calculator. Here, this is the monthly bill savings and also lifetime cumulative bill savings. We also have an advanced option tab that allows you to uh, customize this cost benefit analysis. So you can choose whatever heat pump systems. Uh, sorry, this is the heating system. You can choose whatever heating system you are interested in. And we have some default values for the convergent efficiency of all these technologies. This can change. This can change based on user specific inputs. Um, and the same thing can be done for uh, current water heater. There is also this information, same information about uh, a space heating heat pump uh, in terms of uh, like their performance. What is going to be the COP of the heat pump when used for the cooling mode? All in all, when you provide this information, uh, you are given this cumulative bill savings, which is sensitive to the initial installation cost of the heat pump. So if the initial installation cost of the heat pump is something around like eight grand, you can specify that. And what it does, it calculates a payback time. A payback time for this particular case is about 9.4 years. And also we have the before and after uh, energy consumption by fuel. All right, yeah, so if you have time, visit this website and click through all these tabs. There are very useful information that can be drawn from the calculator. All right, I think with that, we can go take some questions. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm Dr. Joe Matola. And I've been using Analytica since it was Demos, uh, uh, you know, decades ago. Learned how to use it when I was at the MITRE Corporation and have been using it ever since for dozens of different applications. Over on the left here, you have these regression coefficients and so forth. Could you say a little more about how this is actually built? You know, what the internals of the model look like in, the, in this area? I'd be interested okay, so in that. I, did you, I, I couldn't quite hear. Did you ask about the... Like regression. Um, so I, I was trying to ask you to explain a little more about the structure, how uh -huh. you built the model. Okay, sure. 
Yeah, so uh, the model should be designed in a way that allows uh, uh, the load profile to change based on whatever uh, the user specifies. One of the key important aspects is the set point temperature. So un unfortunately, what we get from the DOE building simulation load, at least this was the, their older version of the uh, simulation, which uh, they did in 2014, they have this simulation only for one single set point temperature. So in order for us to have the ability to tweak the load with, set, with regard to set point temperature, we did a regression on an hourly basis. So we try to find the relationship between the load and climate information, which is uh, embedded in the regression coefficient and then use these coefficients and apply them to the set point adjusted climate data, for example. Okay, um, okay, well, thank you. But if I had this model in front of me right now, I would be double clicking on this thing called regression coefficients and looking at how it was actually built. That's what I'm really interested in here is mm -hmm. how did you build it, not what does it do? You were describing what it did, but that doesn't help me to see how you built it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, can, I, can, I can speak to that. So these regression are done separately for each month. And uh, so we have 12 months to our regression and we are using information like uh, temp temperatures and wind chills. And for summer season, we are using relative humidity as well. Uh, so we are getting decent regressions of uh, uh, coefficients of determination that pretty much all of them were about 80% for all the month. So uh, yeah, I didn't design the, pre uh, the presentation to go that deep into the model architecture, uh, but you know, I'm happy to share uh, uh, the methodology in details afterwards. Thank you. So Boone, Boone Lee, uh, just chimed in and said, for the water heater pump use, does that assume the same hot water storage tank size as for gas-fired water heater? Right, yeah, yeah, we do. So, and uh, they continue on, with the better electric gas comparison be to compare the tankless electric hot water heater to a tankless standard gas-fired storage? So yeah, thanks for the question. Um, here our assumption is we are going to meet exactly the same level of load with the same technology. So uh, as for the higher uh, uh, water heaters, what is really important is if you are already using electricity for uh, water heating, this is going to incur a lot of cost because the higher the cost of electricity compared to natural gas per uh, unit of energy is a lot higher. And you are not even taking advantage of the uh, additional efficiency that heat pumps are offering. So if I understood it correctly, the comparison between a gas, a storage gas, hot water, and a heat pump this is a lot uh, closer in terms of cost effectiveness than an electric water heater with a heat pump. So using electricity for uh, heating services, if it is if it's not through heat pumps, it's going to be very costly. I also just, I'm gonna mention um, James Melford, who's also on our team. He's our director of consulting services here at Lumina and worked very closely with Hadi um, to build this model. Uh, but he said that the tankless electric water heater has an efficiency around 100%, whereas the heat pump can have efficiencies greater than 200%. Thus, bill savings will always favor the heat pump over the electric tankless unit. Um, and that was just in addition to um, Boon Lee's uh, questions. Uh, Boon Lee just responded. The point of the tankless water, hot water heaters yeah. is that they motivate you, uh, motivate use of TOU. Yeah, that's the, yeah, 
that's a great point. Yeah, when, when you have a storage system, in, in our project, we didn't look at the uh, like a storage implications side of things. So we were assuming that whenever you have hot water needs, you're gonna uh, consume electricity. But uh, that problem of that heat pump have with respect to at least summer peaking can be relieved if we have a storage system, then we can store heat, heat, hot, heat water during the off-peak period and then use it during the on-peak period. Yeah, thanks for clarification. Um, do you have another two seconds? I can, I can ask another question. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so I think of uh, Analytica as decision support. And one of the decision that I would be making sort of isn't whether to buy a, a water heater, I mean, a, a heat pump or not, or, I mean, that's kind of a big decision. But once you're committed, then it becomes, well, which one do I buy and whom do I buy it from? So some of them may be more reliable than others. So extending the model to uh, allow the user to enter specifics of heat pumps to sort of uh, choose one and, and that way, you know, if some of them are more reliable than others, then the, uh, the, the variability uh, features that come in, what, you might take one that's a little less efficient even, but has much lower maintenance uh, associated with it. And therefore, you know, you w wind up doing better in the long run. I'm just kind of thinking out loud about uh, how the model could be extended. Right, right. That's, uh, that's a great point. And I think that is, can, uh, I guess the bottleneck for us not to have that is because there is not much reliable data. So we would love to have, like, let's say, degradation in the uh, nominal efficiency of the heat pump like we do for battery storage and solar PV. And like, as you said, the maintenance costs, those factors are not included in the result that we show, but they can easily be funneled into the model. We have the structures, once we have the data, we can easily tweak the model and come up with a set, uh, new sets of results. Cool, um, thank you. I would also add, um, I know this is also a piece of our website, the heatpumpevaluation.com. Um, I'm gonna send a link through right now um, that um, just kind of walks through some of the different heat pump options out there that you can purchase. Um, it doesn't necessarily compare them and it's not incorporated into the model, but um, it does have some valuable information on there. So take a look at that. Thank you. Oh, sorry, we, we just got another um, note from Boonley. A small household does not really need a 60 to 80 gallon water heater, which developers generally install. Mm. I just wanted to let you all know that we are doing another heat pump webinar. Uh, we're lucky to have a panelist joining us. Um, for navigating the heat pump landscape, uh, helping consumers and utili utilities and cities make economic decisions. Thank you everyone for your time and attention. If there are questions about the model structure or like any of the insight that I mentioned, I'm happy to chat them. Just reach out and uh, we'll be in touch. Thanks.